Hey, this is part two of how Claire built Bean Goods up to a million dollars in sales. If you haven't listened to part one, go do that first and make sure to download the timeline that goes along with this episode, okay? Fashionbrainacademy.com slash bean goods, B E A N G O O D S. That is Claire's company. Go get that now and then follow along with part two. She's dropping truth bombs and she takes questions from our members. Enjoy. And then we implemented that up an upsell app that was huge for us that I think really helped with our average order value. Yeah, your AOV is up 11%. And so an upsell app is sort of, sort of, you see it on Amazon guys where they're like, people also like this, or you may also like this. And it's right there and it's related to the product that they're searching and buying or thinking to buy. Yeah. That's huge. 11% increase in average order value is significant. And we use, just as a side note, if anyone's interested, we use frequently bought together. Um, and it's very similar to like the Amazon upsell technique. So I think like our, you know, everyone shops on Amazon. So they're used to that. They're like, it, um, yeah. So that's what we use. The app is, or the the upsell app is frequently bought together. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Clever and it's name. very easy. It's like, cause I, it took me a long time to find an upsell app. Like I looked into Ezra's um, upsell app and I looked into one other one that's really popular. I can't remember the name of it, but they both were just like too confusing for me. Mm-hmm. And this frequently bought together one is super simple and it's been significant for us. And then um, when you started Google ads for the first time, what was your ad spend? What was your budget? We are not spending a ton. Um, you, Google ads, right? Mm-hmm. I think we're spending. Um, uh, I want to. I want to give you like an accurate number. So, we like on a weekly basis, we are spending around four hundred and fifty. Okay. So it's very small. For, okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, actually, no, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. It's less than that. Um, we we're spending 330 a week right now. So around 1200 a month compared to maybe Facebook, Instagram, which would be, I don't know. Um, currently, currently on our Facebook ads, we are spending Ding. Um, well, we're spending around 800 a week. Oh, really? on our- yeah, we've cut. We- That's well, lower. Yeah. Okay. Last week we spent, um, 1400, but that's because they are actually doing decent. Um, but yeah, we cut way back on our Facebook ad spend. That's awesome. <laughs> I know one thing that Claire has done, you guys, and she can tell you more about this, but when she had, she went back to using a different ads manager, they scale, they're like, we're going to scale you because you're able to do this. And that didn't work out great. Like did not. Yeah. Yeah. um, yeah, So the ROAS get all messed up and like, yeah, go ahead. I don't want to speak for you. Oh yeah. I mean, so over the past, like since 2018 till now, we've had, we've worked with two different ads managers. I've looked into a bunch of like Facebook ads, um, management programs, whatnot. And yeah, we've worked with two definitely smaller scale, um, kind of like independent, they have their own Facebook ads management companies but they're like one person um it's not like a big agency but still like the retainer um the retainer was significant enough with this last one that we worked with that um and then also she like was scaling our ads uh significantly and um to a point where it was hurting our bottom line and we found that out through working closely with our bookkeeping team and they're able to identify like, Hey, like you guys need to not spend this much money on your Facebook 
ads marketing. So like just straight up, like you guys need to stop doing this because it's straight up hurting your bottom line. And like the percentage is like, just not, it's not, it's not working out. So yeah, like there's a certain point where you go to the ad store and you're like, here, I'll give you $4, give me back, you know, 16, but then you can't just give them 16 and they give you four times that like, it's, I mean, for most of us and people listening, you can, you can scale more, but for you guys, for Claire, like eventually it was like, okay, that's, that's the point where it starts to, and we got to cut back on the spend. Yeah. Like you have to find that sweet spot. Yeah, that wasn't a fun, uh, that wasn't a fun it was operation. Not, it was not. I was very stressed out during that, that uh, period of time. It, we were able to turn it around like fairly fast though. Like within just a couple of months, it was like, okay, you guys are in like. But that's because you were watching your numbers. You had the good exactly. big bookkeeper. You, yeah, that's because you were on it. Because yeah. looking at the ROAS, it didn't look that bad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, honestly, I really do feel like those big retainer fees, like really hurt. Yes. You know, unfortunately, even though you, you have a million dollar business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so right now you're not, you don't have an ads person. No, you're going to stick with that. Cause you're good at it. And I know it's, it's once they work, they work for a long time. You have systems, you have VIP, whatever, but like, what, what is your plan with that? Are you going to get someone else or are you going to just keep doing it yourself? Um, yeah, at this point, uh, I don't like, we don't have plans to hire anyone right now. Um, I'm, I'm fine with where our Facebook ads are at and, um, we're kind of like in that nice, like sweet spot area w with our ad spend and I'm not stressed out about it. Like, yes, yeah. I could be putting in more time. I could like, I've had on my list, um, for my weekly like tasks list for me to personally do for literally like, I don't know, three, four weeks of new ads that I want to get up. Yeah. With, but well, yeah, but I am happy with um, where we're at right now and I'm not stressed about it. So. Yeah. And your return on invest ad spend is good. Yeah. So decent. can I speed around you some questions from our club members? Absolutely. And, and one question we'll get to in a minute is you've mentioned you have this system for launching new products or relaunching products. Like maybe it's, you know, it's back, something's back in stock and you have this launch strategy that totally works for you, including a VIP launch strategy system. So I'm going to ask you about that in a second. And by the way, if you are in the club, you guys, Claire is going to be a, um, a guest expert teaching a drill down of her launch strategy and how they, how she does it. Cause it is nothing short of brilliant and it works every time. It is like a sure thing. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So when somebody is just starting out or no, they have a, they have a, a she has a Shopify store. Um, she got started on Etsy while she had her corporate job. Um, she gets some sales on Etsy. It's going fine, but you know, she doesn't want to stick for Etsy. She's wondering, you know, I have this Shopify store. It's finally like looking the way I kind of want it to look. Should I start running ads now? If so, what kind of ads and what kind of budget? Like just a general idea of what, what would you do? Okay. Um, so I, I don't know. I have zero experience with Etsy, but um, I do know that you like don't own your platform over there. And so like that lack of control is. She uh, does not want to continue. Okay. okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. She's like, yeah. I'm all in on Shopify. I started with Etsy because I had a full-time job. It's been great. No right. shade, but like my future is over here. Should I do ads? Excellent. So she's wondering specifically about ads. Um, for, for Shopify. Yeah. Like, should Shopify. I do should I, should I start running ads to my Shopify store? And if so, would I just like, should they just be like, here's my product, go buy it now. Would you do like a giveaway ad? Would you do a lead gen? Would you do a lead magnet? Like what kind of ad would you run if you're just getting started with ads? Okay. Well, first of all, um, I think that she should heavily focus on pushing traffic to the store through like, like start with her organic social platforms and then with her email marketing efforts and adding SMS 
to like start like working on um, growing her SMS list in addition to email list. Um, so I would start there, but then in terms of ads, like where to start with, um, I would do a retargeting ad, definitely. Um, so basically, uh, I think they're still called DPAs. Yeah. And yeah, so I definitely would would do that. We still have, that's one of our best performing ads always. And we don't spend a ton on it. Like we literally only spend like um, $20 a day. I think DPA something is like dynamic product ad. So they show <clears throat> the product you looked at on the site right to the person again. Yep, exactly. And it's shown <laughs> in like, like, you know, like a carousel situation. So I definitely would get that one set up. Um, first and foremost, almost. And then I would focus on um, maybe like a simple like bestsellers, um, either like carousel or like even just one specific product that is your bestseller, like just have that like as an image um, and linking directly to that product. Those are I, yeah, I would definitely do that. And then if you want to focus on growing your list through ads, like your either your email list or your te text list, um, we have like a whole kind of uh, non-traditional strategy for that um, where we have people like they go to a landing page and it's either for a giveaway or it's for hyping up a VIP drop which um we do several times a year and so we have an ad and the link goes to a landing page and we collect like their email or their text or both and but the ad is this is like a little bit technical but um the ad is um optimized for conversions instead of optimized for um you know, lead gen or traffic, it's optimized for conversion. So my thought and my thought on that is that you're attracting people who are going to want to shop. So this works so brilliantly for Claire. And you guys, if you're in the club, we have a section on this in there. Claire teaches how to set up um, it's like a five minute video that you did for us ages ago. Thank you. Um, which is like how to set up a, a landing page to get like VIP or a giveaway page. And then we have a, a section called the perfect giveaway. <clears throat> so it's the same system for our VIP list before I drop a new drop or for a giveaway. And it's in the club for those of you who are in there. Okay. And if not, yeah. then just look up, how do I do a giveaway with a landing page with Shopify? There's, but, but like she said, you run the ad with the, the, the I mean, there's the, the conversion thing is important. So yeah. And, um, yeah. Those those are our best performing ads. They're always our best performing ads. It's so great. It's so great. Okay, next, Castione. Um, so you kind of covered this, but if, if someone was to, she's, she's at 200,000 right now in her jewelry business. She's in the club. She's been a client for a long time. She's a total baller. If she's, she said, I want to get to a million dollars. What is, what was the key thing to make the jump from 200 K to a million? Oh man. So there's a lot of keys. Go um, listen to the rest of the episode. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely a lot of keys, but I, I saw this question and I jotted down like my, my keys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's your keys. Um, definitely. It sounds like she already is a client of yours. So I definitely suggest finding a, a business coach slash mentor. Um, that has been huge. And then focusing on your best, on your marketing activities that have the highest ROI. And for us, and I think for a lot of people um, in e-commerce and in product-based businesses, it is email, um, SMS, our brand rep program, uh, uh, Facebook ads, and the upsell app. That's been huge for us just this past year. And then getting really serious about your launch strategy. Um, definitely, I suggest 
doing VIP drops. You don't have to do, you don't have to do them every time. We don't do them for every single drop, but we do them on, um, on a lot of drops and doing value adds versus a bunch of discounting. Um, so like, it's for instance, awful. we do like, uh, you know, the first, we do this a lot, like the first 50 orders will get, it can be as small as a free sticker. We do that all the time. Um, but yeah, that's like our biggest one is free stickers, but we do a lot of value adds versus discounting. Our mystery packs have been huge for us these past few years. So some sort of like mystery, um, mystery thing, like mystery uh, theme, whether yeah. it's like a mystery product or a pack or whatever, like our people love it. And I think generally a lot of, a lot of people love that mystery element. It's just like really fun. I think it works in every niche. And I remember when you were first going to do it, it was right when the pandemic started. And I was like, Claire, there's enough mystery going around. I don't know if they need a mystery pack. And you're like, I have a good feeling about it. I'm like, okay. And it's like been the best thing ever. So yes. <laughs> yeah, like, I highly you? recommend playing around with that. Um, then like limited edition releases too. We do a lot of that um, for that uh, kind of, kind of ties hand in hand with like the mystery element, but definitely like for that FOMO factor. And then uh, paying attention to your analytics, huge. And paying attention to like your, your percentages um, of your spend in, um, in uh, conjunction with your, with your like sales numbers, like the yeah. percentage that you're spending, you're spending. Um, that's how we identified that, that Facebook ad spend issue in, in 2021. And then definitely outsourcing through, uh, contractors. And then if you could get like, just start with, with an, in, an intern or an assistant, um, I, it's huge. It's, it's huge. huge. Um, yeah, it's huge and, and it's hard at first, but it, then it's it not is. hard. Oh my God. <laughs> It is, but it is 100% worth it. Um, and then um, just focusing on your community um, and kind of like nurturing and growing your community centered around your brand. And so, would you, if you were starting over again today, would you start a Facebook group? I would. Okay. I, I would, yeah. And would you... Um, invest the same amount of effort into Instagram that you did back when it was a little easier to get momentum? Um, I would see, I think I would, but also that I would see what, um, what kind of is, what takes off for you, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, those three, because maybe like your brand just like like takes off on TikTok, like your people yeah. might be there. So I would just like see what um, makes the most sense into, you'll know, I, you, you'll probably know um, where you're getting momentum. And for us, we got a ton of momentum with Instagram in the beginning when it was a lot easier because we started our Instagram account in 2012. But like our Instagram is, hasn't grown in months yeah um now but our people are definitely there yeah and, but yeah we haven't been putting as much effort into our instagram and so i remember when you first started chris was spending a lot of time on instagram and responding and engaging and all the things um so do you feel would you say that facebook groups is very different than like using your facebook page like even even non-facebooky people are in groups um, yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, like all of our best customers are in our Facebook group. Yeah. Um, the most engaging people in our, not just customers, but also just like engaging people in our community. Yeah. Um, they're all, all in our Facebook group. And I wouldn't say they're like, they're in our, they're not like old or 
they're definitely in our demographic. <laughs> I'm trying to say like, if you guys hate on Facebook, that's fine. But a Facebook group is a little different is what we're trying to say. Yeah. 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 Like it's not like the, the, they're in our, they're in our demographic. Got it. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people are like, I'm Facebook is dead. Okay. Hey, it's fine. But a group is different. Um, mm-hmm. Are there any other questions that you want to answer first before I just start? Oh, no, no. COVID-19? Yeah. Just keep, keep firing them at me. Okay. Um, okay. Then the there's, I mean, I like them all, but like, um, okay. Key ways. We did this already focused on traffic and list building. We kind of gave, you kind of said that already, I believe. Um, did, okay. What about, did you start with certain types of marketing and then add additional? Because a lot of people are spreading their sem- themselves super, super thin doing all the things. Did you start with certain types of marketing and then add, like, I mean, you just started paper, paper click ads or whatever they're called now. <laughs> oh, the Google, ads. Google ads. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We like literally just started the, I've put that off for years. Um, we've done email forever. Um, yeah. Yeah, like almost since the beginning, we've done email. So I would definitely start with email. Email is still our number one. Um, uh, we get the most, like our, our number one ROI is from email. Um, like last year, 46% of our sales came from email and our return um, is 108 on our <laughs> For every dollar she spends on email, they get $108 back. Yeah. And I mean, I have clients same, 100, 108. And on average, it's like $37. If it's, I mean, it's, you guys do just grow your freaking email list. Please listen to Claire. Yeah. yeah, like 100% definitely invest the time and the energy um, in your email efforts. Uh, then I- we didn't add SMS is like fairly new, but it's been, it's, it's our number two yeah. um, marketing activity. And it's, I highly recommend adding SMS to your marketing. Um, last year, um, our return for that is, was 48. Um, so good. Yeah. And then Facebook ads. Yes. That's our, that's our number three three, I would say. Um, and we have been doing Facebook ads for a long time. Um, so I would, I would recommend adding Facebook ads. Um, yeah, I would kind of do like the email, the SMS, Facebook ads, our, our, our return on ad spend for Facebook ads in, in 2021 was 2.7. So you see the difference there. It's huge. Um, so email is 108 and, uh, SMS is 45, 48, sorry. Uh And then 2.7. Yeah. So, but I will say that they all kind of work together in your, like, um, what is that word? Funnel. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) in your funnel like they all like work together so I I do think that Facebook ads are still significant and Um, do you think like you have new customers um returning customers I forget the rate that you told me but it was like 33 or 38 or something um and do you think Facebook ads is the number one way to get new people for you Um, Yeah, I actually, I actually do like think I haven't really thought about that, but, but I actually do. I actually do think that that is probably one of our number one ways that we get new customers. Um, So yeah, that's, that's huge. That's huge. And, and here's the thing, even if you're getting like, if Claire's getting 2.7 for every dollar she spends, she gets $2 and 70 cents back. No one's complaining about that, but the back end on those people she gets them on her list. She gets them on her SMS. List. Like, hello, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, we, and we did get in 2021 just for, um, I don't know, further explanation. We, we did get $319,000 of sales from that's from our Facebook ad spend. 
Damn, girl. Okay. Oh, yeah. So your returning customer is 37%, which means, you know, whatever that is, 63% are new. And um, uh, it's just a beautiful storm of growth, honestly. Yeah. Um, a couple other things that I, I definitely recommend as well is um, having a, a brand rep team. Like, yeah, a, yeah I would definitely, I, I recommend doing that for sure. Um, and we use Refersion just for, for a side note, if you're interested in starting your brand rep program, I recommend it. We've used it for a couple of years, um, maybe like three years we've used it. And it's just, it's easy. It's fairly easy. And um, it just like manages your, um, however you're going to pay them, whether it's through gift cards or uh, we actually pay them 5% of every sale that they bring in. Um, but yeah, for instance, our um, brand rep, like what we spent on our brand rep program last year, our return on ad spend on that was 15.25. And we brought in like $142,000 or our brand reps brought in $142,000 in sales. So for every dollar you spent on like reversion, you know, managing yeah. the brand reps, the discounts, it was $1 yeah, yeah. in $15.25 out. Yes. Yeah. Like on, on how much, like we actually paid our brand reps and then yeah. the subscription costs. Yeah. So that's amazing. Okay. So if you're just getting started, we look at email, SMS, Facebook ads, brand reps. Yeah. I would kind of, I, I think I would go in that um, order. And then obviously like organic social posting. Um, but we've always done email and we've always done organic social media. We've put a lot of effort into that. Yep. Um, yeah. And then adding that upsell app for sure. That's like, like that frequently bought together app I recommend. And it's, it, I think that that is definitely worth it. Would you, so there's two schools of thoughts. Th thoughts. And I think you and I are on the same school of thought, but it doesn't really matter what I am. What, when people are starting or not starting and they're, you know, like, like so let's just take the example of my um, member that has 200,000 in sales. Do you think the best case scenario is if the business owner manages their own ads? Sort of like, I think, was it the Saturday morning pancakes girl who kind of said that yeah and and then you're back to that like do you have strong feelings on like that's just worked what worked for me but it doesn't mean it works for everybody or do you feel like kind of you should do your own ads oh man that's a really good question I well historically I have heard um stories from other business owners in like similar spaces to ours like the Saturday morning pancakes gal and just like in, you know, Facebook groups that I'm in and whatnot of people saying the same thing. They're like, we spent thousands of dollars on our Facebook ads manager or like thousands of dollars on um, a very expensive ads agency. And um, just, just the return is not worth it. Like it'll like, and for us, it wasn't worth it. And I've heard that story, similar stories to ours where it hurts your bottom line. Um, so if you can, if you can, I definitely would just continue doing your own ads management for as long as you can. Um, if you, if you need Facebook ads education, because it's, it's, I don't, I've been doing it for years and I definitely like still don't consider myself an expert. Um, but there's, there's like, uh, what is that guy's name that I've been interested in taking his program? Like he really educates you on how to successfully run your, your own ads. His name's like Jason or something. It's called, it's the apparel ad cloud program. I've been like very interested in that program for a long time. Um, still, even now I would, um, I, I would invest in that program, but yeah, um, I would, I would focus on educating yourself in okay. managing them because nobody knows your brand better than you. And although I was 
pretty happy with our Facebook ads management in terms of like them kind of understanding our brand and like their copy was, was pretty good stuff like that, but nobody knows your brand better than you. So yeah. you're honestly probably always going to do the best on your ads. Yeah. I got you. And maybe when you're, you know, ne- when we talk next year, the, not next year, because next year, well, tell us what's next for you. What's your plan for growth for this year? Shall I not just reveal what I think is in your brain? How about that? Yeah. Um, what's in store for this year? Well, this year we're not hyper-focused on like a huge percentage in growth. I will be happy if we grow by like 10%. Um, 10 to 20% would be great. And the whole point of growing that 10 to 20% would, would specifically be in building out our team and hiring a couple of like, sig- like doing a couple of significant hires of people who are going to help us with the management and the operations, um, like the like an operations manager or a mini CEO or yeah. both. Um, so that's like, that's our, that's kind of our uh, vision and goals for, for 2022. And this is so smart, you guys, because if Claire and, and Chris and the team decided, all right, let's grow another 30%. You know, that would be fine, but how are you going to build out the team and do the things and take the vacations? Like Claire, you know, over the years, she hasn't had a ton of balance and like, she wants time. You know, you've, you've done great with it in the last couple of years, but you're only getting to the point where you're like, Oh, wait a minute. They yeah. got this. Like I can really just do my thing sometimes. Cause I have people in place. So yeah. you can't be in growth mode. And then also in like systems and team mode, like it's impossible. Yeah. For, for, yeah, 100%. And like, kind of like, yeah, where we're at right now, we'll just continuing on the way that we've been doing with the, with the big growth spurts and like leaving, like, um, not putting as much effort into like our systems and team building and stuff like that. Like it, it's just, it's not sustainable, yeah. uh, mentally for like, uh, for me or for Chris. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely our focus this year is team building and systems and stuff like that. And even to have the, the, um, experience and the, gosh, I just feel like it's a brave decision that you guys made on that day at 9am to turn off sales. Because if you're at, thir- if you're at whatever K that early, you could have hit a hundred thousand dollars in a day probably, but it would have kind of broke you. And then what's the point, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. We just don't, we don't have the, um, the people power to handle that kind of volume at this point. You know, a lot of people would have just gone for the, for it and then like screwed it up later. And you guys were smart yeah. enough and experienced enough to be like, Oh, Oh, it just told me, but like, yeah, you gotta do, you gotta do it. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> um, okay. So What was the other thing? What's next? Okay. I think that that's, those are all my questions. I mentioned your system for the VIP stuff and the launch, but I think we kind of covered it. Basically, you don't do it every time you, 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 when you build your list with a VIP list, you're like, you, you run an ad to cold traffic, right? Saying, Hey, get on the first dibs to see this new thing. And people get on the list to get a new thing, which means I'm interested in buying this thing. <laughs> it's not like get on the list for a free iPad or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, yeah, really yeah. And I'll go. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, you're building your list. Um, um, we've definitely had more success in terms of, um, finding people who building our list with people who, uh, buy. Yeah. We, we definitely have more success finding the buying behavior people (laughs) through like the VIP launches versus the giveaways. Right. A lot of times, 
like you can absolutely like grow your list like crazy doing giveaways, but you're not necessarily finding the people who are going to buy your products. But you do both, right? We do both. Yeah, yeah. We, we do both. Cause I, cause you, you still will find, um, you still absolutely will find great, great people um, through the giveaway building. And yeah. a lot, maybe like you're warming them up too through yes. like the giveaway, you know? Yes. That's a yeah, really then, good point. Mm -hmm. I was always against giveaways because I had seen a lot of my clients build a great list with tire kickers, but the way you do it, the way that Susan Bradley teaches it for us in the club is with the perfect giveaway is different. And it, it works much, much better than the average, like I'm going to do a giveaway. And then you just get a bunch of freebie seekers who don't buy yeah. and you end up getting more frustrated. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a way to run a giveaway and not a way to run a giveaway. Yes. I know. Totally. Um, okay. And if somebody is like, oh my gosh, my sister's cousin's friend has an adorable wiener dog. Where should we send them? Um, yes. Any wiener dog enthusiasts can be sent to our Facebook page or our Instagram page <laughs> at Bean Goods. <laughs> yeah. At Bean Goods and we're beangoods.com. So. You guys, the cutest stuff. The sleep shirts, I sleep with wieners. I mean, you don't have to have a wiener dog to find that just freaking hysterical and want that. I love the Navy version, by the way. Yes. Killing yes. it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, Claire, so much. You rock. Um, for those of you in the club, go ahead and check out those things that we mentioned. If you're not, you might want to come on in there. Fashionbrainacademy.com slash the club. And you will get more of Claire and a chance to ask her your questions live. If you remember when she breaks down her entire launch strategy for us. And if you learned anything about Claire, she's not afraid to share the deets with you, the good, the bad, and the numbers. And like, I just so much respect, like really thank you so much for being here and for doing this, Claire. I so appreciate it. It is my pleasure. And thank you for all of your ongoing support. You are such a badass. You know, the thing about Claire and most of my more su most successful clients is when we talk about something, it'll be like, Hey, what about this? You know, you think about it, you answer yes or no. And if you do it, you do it. Like you don't fuck around, like your speed to execution. You don't worry about making it perfect. You don't worry about like, I have to take a class on that first. You just try stuff. And especially in your marketing. And it's really really a, an amazing piece of your success. I think. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You don't make everything like a big deal. You're just like, whatever, let me try that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, you, you have to be a risk taker to be in this space. You just, you have to be. You <laughs> <laughs> have to be if it kills you. <laughs> yep. All right, guys, take care. And thanks again, Claire. Absolutely. Bye, Bye guys. guys.